Hello everyone. I complained about the lack of windows in the asset store and someone named uh, 10chaos1 was kind enough to uh, make me some window meshes. We're going to go ahead and look at the, my favorite of them, this, uh, this blinds open windows, open window, and we're going to talk about how to make it more suitable for game dev and the sort of uh, early polish that's required to get a functional model out of these sort of things. So this is the sort of thing you'd find in, a, um, in an office building and uh, that's exactly what I need so that's what we're going to create but there are some details that need to be fixed because they're not quite right so just pull these in here and uh, and we will begin and take a look come on you I want to pull you up a little bit why are you like half a pixel come on Arrgh. Jeez. All right, so the first problem we're going to have is that this here is a combined frame and glass object. And I can show you what I mean by switching over to faces. Select the frame, select the glass, see? It's the same, same object. But when you're doing game dev, you actually want the transparent objects to be their own object, or at least their own sub-mesh. And that's because transparent materials are notoriously annoying, so you don't want to apply them to any part of the object they don't absolutely have to be applied to. Also, this will let us use a very, very simple glass material, rather than having to have a material that's half wood and half transparent glass, which would be a texture that we would have to carefully UV map, and we're not going to do any careful UV mapping. So we're going to select the window, both sides of the glass window, and then hit P and punch it out to its own object, and that would be this object. I'm going to rename it from window 0001 to glass. You can't see me doing that over on the right, but that's what I just did. Um, and then I'm just going to hide it. I'm also going to hide this guy. Oh, I forgot to turn on. That's fine, though. So now we have this frame here. Uh, and this has a couple of idiosyncrasies. I'm in face select mode, and you might notice that there seem to be four faces floating in the middle of nowhere. That's actually these guys. They're these L-shaped faces. Now that works fine when you're doing architectural modeling, but it doesn't work when you're trying to do game modeling. I mean, it, it's not it's not like a it won't make your game crash and explode, but in general you're going to want to make sure that you don't have any concave faces. Um, ideally, you have only quads, and in fact, after we do this, we will have only quads. But um, uh, more importantly, the L shape is is uh, uh, not acceptable for game development just because it. Um, it is concave. There we go. And I think that is correct. So let's go out and select the glass, this glass object here. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to UV map it. So let's go inside of it. And we're just going to make it so that it's one basic pane of glass and we just have a, a normal glass texture that we put on it. So to do that, we are going to just unwrap it and unwrap it. And you can see that this created two squares, and that's not what we want. We want one square that overlaps. Well, there are a couple of options as to how to get that. Um, but I think that the problem might simply be... Let me hide this outside. Hide this. I'm, I'm wondering whether or not there are faces around this. Yeah, there are. So we're going to go ahead and kill off this... Um, this face that is uh, hooked around the inside here. Uh, there we are. No, no, I want... Okay, maybe I have to... Oh, there is no face. It just looked like there was. I'm trying to figure out why it's not just mapping... Well, oh, that's because it's scaled. Um, one of the things you're going to want to do... I'll just do each of these separately, because now they're each the full scale, see? One of the things you're going to want to be careful of when you're creating uh, game assets, you don't want to scale... Uh, let me go ahead and pull this open here. You don't want to scale here. So, for example, this guy, 0.06, 7.70. Uh, this scaling works fine in Blender, and it works fine for scenes in a movie, for example. But it means that the mesh object is very hard to use in the game environment. So these should all be one, if at all possible. It would actually be quite a bit of effort for me to go and unscale them and then go inside here and scale the actual mesh points, the, the, the vertices and vertexes. Um, that would be quite a bit of effort, so we're not going to do that. But uh, that would be what we should do ideally, just because 
it would make it so that we wouldn't have any problem using that mesh in other ways later on. So this doesn't have any UV mapping, and we need to UV map it. So if we unwrap it like this, we end up with this mess, this total mess. So what we want to do is we want to end up with long grain running around. And that means that we can't simply project it either. Um, but we're going to go ahead and just deal with that problem because I don't feel like actually doing any complicated stuff right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this and then we're going to project from view. And you can see that just gives us this frame here. And this is not how you would do it if you were going to be selling it on the asset store, for example, because it's kind of a half-assed way to create a material. And you'll end up with strikes, uh, stripes uh, in the wrong spot sometimes. Um, but this is good if you just need to get something going. Uh, and since the model is scaled awkwardly, uh, we will eventually have to replace it, probably just by uh, recreating it with the same size later. So this is also one object, so you've got these in here at the same object as this. And that isn't a problem normally, but it is a problem for us if we want to animate these individually, uh, or not individually, but en masse, um, which means that we would have to create uh, a lot of weird steps along the way. Um, it's actually best to do this in a different manner, but... Uh, that's a little difficult to describe, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to split them off, and you'll have to trust me that splitting them off is uh, better than having them all in the same unit. It's also going to make it much easier for us to texture, so grab these guys, hit P, split them off, select them, and name them something beside blinds. Call them blinds, and then we'll call this guy the blind frame. Blinds frame. Now these things are also scaled, I'm sure, uh, which means that when we do a, um, an unwrapping, we're going to get something crazy because the scaling is applied to the UV map. So if we unwrap these guys, we end up with this because the UV map is scaled in the same way that the blinds are scaled, which is just uh, not acceptable. We're not able, that's, that's just not, not going to work out for us. So let's project from view, and you can see that we get this slat. So we'll just scale that up. Now, this is going to have an issue where uh, the, the vertical tiny little segments inside of each of these is going to be a little hard uh, for us to select here, but let's see whether we can show you what I mean. These guys here, these don't have any texture width to them. They are a zero, a zero width line, which means that they're going to be whatever color that pixel happens to be. But that's fine. Anyone who wants to examine the corner of the blinds is paying way too much atten attention to my demo, doc uh, my demo uh, um, models. Now we do have to still do this guy. So if we select him, you can see that he has some uh, texture already. And uh, he also has a face. What's this? Oh, that's his center. That's fine. So this is fine. Um, I'm not really that picky. We'll just scale it and move it. And now we're going to save this and go back into Unity. And it's been reloaded. And you can see that now that we've split it up more properly and we've given it UV mapping, uh, the shadows are falling on it more correctly. So we still need to do a couple of things with it. Um, it's going to be difficult because I don't have... Uh, here. So here's the import selections. And we're going to want to calculate the, 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 tan the uh, normals and just hit apply. And that'll give us a nice sharp look. And from here, what we can do is we can start to apply whatever materials we think might be decent. So let's go and gr just, just push through all of my various materials and just see what we've got. Here's a material. And you can see that now we have a, an actual uh, mapping that makes it so we can see what's going on. Whereas before it would have been one flat color. Uh, but we that's not a good material for us. How about this for the glass. This is a simple grid material that works well for high impact glass. So that's what we'll use. And now uh, we're going to go down to the floors because we're going to go and steal the texture from the floors um, which is under here somewhere. Uh, hold on. There's a lot of textures. Uh, I haven't winnowed this down yet so it's... The good thing about stealing textures is that they, uh, the fewer materials you have, and therefore the fewer textures you have, um, the more uh, speed you'll get out of your renderer. Um, now, we have to decide what we want these guys to be and what we want that guy to be. We could make it wood. 
That actually doesn't look so bad. I guess that's fine. Shall we make everything out of wood? Just just a wooden. Oh, that, that looks a little silly though, doesn't it? How about we make that out of concrete? Because it won't be recognizable as concrete on that scale. So this is the same texture as our ground. Oh, that that is a little bit too concrete-y. Um, it's very bumpy. Uh, let's choose a different. Um, how about this guy? Uh, how does this look? Ah, there we are. So now we have a window that it doesn't look great textured because we haven't created any kind of bump map or anything that, that works for it. But it looks fine and you can see that it's a window and it will look good in the in the game. Uh, changing out these materials for more suitable materials would be a good idea. But only if you're planning to change out the UV map to allow for a much, much higher density of detail. So for example, we might switch out the UV map for this frame. Uh, we might create a frame that actually has detail work stenciled in here. Uh, and that would be valuable for using bump maps to create details where there are none. For example, if we were to turn this towards the sun so we can see it a little bit better. If we were to do that, we could put in, oh, come on, there we are. That's Unity's fault. Uh, put in little screws here. You could put in a screw there by just putting in a dot on the um, uh, on the bump map and then drawing a little screw in on the texture. And that sort of thing is really valuable. And that would be really cool over here for this guy because we could put in vertical ripples um, or something like that just using the bump map. We wouldn't have to worry about the texture. Anyhow, this has just been a quick little tutorial on how you might turn um, uh, models that were created for architectural prototyping or other purposes uh, into game assets. This is actually a pretty good game asset uh, because it's low poly but high detail and it's got a lot of really great layers to it that make it look good regardless of where what position you're standing at. Um, the only downside to this model is that uh, this particular kind of blinds are actually quite hard to animate unless you make every single blind an individual unit and that would add uh, six more game objects to the game so it's up to you whether or not you want to have that possible but I'll probably go back in and make each of these blinds their own unit uh, for that purpose just not today um, this can be suited this can be fitted into a wall or whatever you want but you notice that the scale is rather awkward and that's because it was created huge in blender um, these these little tiles here each of these each of these tiles down here is supposed to be a meter so this is like 20 meters wide um, but that can be fixed by just scaling the whole thing like so so it can be made whatever size you want as long as it's the right basic ratio um, but the only issue with it is that all of these interior objects are scaled so if we were to grab someone else like say this player body here this player body has a very basic capsule mesh if we were to replace that capsule mesh with um, with the blinds mesh. You can see that what we got is not what we expected. It doesn't look anything like the blinds. That's because the blinds have been scaled in Blender, which means that the mesh uh, is unusable as its own little mesh. Uh, and as I recall, the blinds are um, they're probably just going down into the ground or up into the sky. Uh, but it's, it's a, it might be a little hard to believe that these objects are, that this square is the same as one of those blinds, but it really is. That's, that's how he did it, and it's a perfectly great, there it is, there's the rest. This is a perfectly great way to do it in Blender, especially if you're doing architectural design or something. But it means that I have to use the Blender object uh, as my window, and the Blender object has some annoying overhead. Um, so in general, I prefer not to do that if I can avoid it. But all in all, uh, it's a huge asset. Uh, there, are, there are half a dozen of these windows, and they will really, uh, really enhance the feel of my bases. So I'm looking forward to working them into the bases, and thank you very much to 10Chaos1 for his work on my behalf.